Welcome back, everyone. It's the Bourbon Judge. First and foremost, happy end of the week. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed the holiday season. Uh, I definitely enjoyed my time with the family, really loved it. But again, I would be remiss if I didn't say happy belated Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate, happy and merry that, right? All right. Um, again, also, I wanted to say, you know, kind of thinking back to last week's video, I asked everyone, say, hey, you know, give me feedback, suggestions, you know, and so forth, right? Let me put that into action for you and make those videos, right? So I had some uh, some great comments. Uh, some of my man, Ray K, reached out. Ray K said, hey, Bourbon Judge, you know, please buy and check and do a review of Re Remus Repeal 4. I did Remus Repeal 3. I did not like it. But Ray K is telling me that Remus Repeal 4 is a buy. So that is coming soon, I promise, Ray K. I just got to find it. Um, Sepsia, my girl Reception said, Hey, Bourbon Judge, you need to check out either Blanton's Gold, or I think she may have said also Blanton's Straight from the Barrel. So that's coming soon as well, Sepsian. Um, my man, uh, Carino, Carino out west said, Hey, Bourbon Judge, you need to do a review of um, uh, Russell's Reserve, right? Give some love to the Russell's family. So I got you, Carino. I got a couple bottles. I promise one's coming your way. And then uh, last but not least, my, my man Steve O said, Hey, Bourbon Judge, you should do a blind tasting of, um, you know, uh, barrel proof rise. So that's coming as well, Steve O, right? It's coming very soon, I promise. And I'll also say, in 2021, a lot of changes coming up for the Bourbon Judge, right? All good stuff, just more ways for me to interact more with you guys and gals out there. So be on the lookout for a video coming very soon in the next uh, couple days, a week or so, um, giving you some updates on what's going on with the Bourbon Judge and how I'm going to be changing some things in 2021. So that's that. All right. So what are we reviewing today? Cream of Kentucky. <laughs> All right. So what do we know about Cream of Kentucky? A couple of things. The brand dates back to 1888, a brand out of Cincinnati, Ohio, which is where my family's from, right there on the um, on the state line between Ohio and Kentucky, right? So um, right there, like many other distilleries, very well known, did very well in the night in the, like the early 1900s, even after Prohibition, right into like 1930s and 40s. Did very well, right? They also, um, part of the reason why they did well was because Norman Rockwell actually did a lot of like the images and the branding and so forth for them. So they received a lot of like accolades because of that. Um, unfortunately, many companies from the 50s until recently, they shut down. Fast forward to 2019, Jim Rutledge, um, as it shows on the bottle here, J.W. Rutledge Distillery, but Jim Rutledge, the former master distiller of Four Roses, and he was the master distiller of Four Roses for over 20 years. Two, oh, over 20 years. So the man knows bourbon, right? Um, he was the master distiller there for over 20 years, wanted to do his own thing, wanted to produce his own wonderful bourbon, and uh, through the help of some friends, some um, obviously some investors, right? It takes cash, right? You're not making anything without money behind it, right? With some investors, some friends started out making Cream of Kentucky, right? So they brought the brand back. They um, obviously they brought the brand and they started making Cream of Kentucky bourbon. So like any other bourbon, right? When you're starting out as a new distillery, what do you do? You don't just have bourbon sitting there just kind of waiting, right? You have to get your bourbon sourced. So Jim Rutledge, I give him credit. He said, listen, when we start off Jim Rutledge or Cream of Kentucky, we want to start off using sourced uh, Kentucky bourbon, right? So bourbon that is truly sourced, but only from Kentucky distilleries. So what does that mean to me and you? That means probably no MGP. That means no Tennessee. That means just straight up Kentucky bourbon, right? So he's going in batches and he's buying thousands of, 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 of barrels, whatever, um, in batches and he's getting great top of the line source bourbon. So the first batch happened in January, 2019. Uh, that one was aged, I believe it was like 11 and a half years. And they've had a couple other batches along the way, but the batch we're reviewing today is batch number five. Single number five, right? This one comes in at 102 proof and is 13 years old. So I've already poured a little bit, let me pour a little bit more. Ah, that one was stuck in there. Um, so we know the we know the age, 13 years, 102 proof. Availability standpoint, now I got this as a Christmas gift, right? So Santa brought this on his sleigh. But uh, we do know Cream of Kentucky, it's a little bit harder to find, right? Now it's not 
Buffalo Trace antique collection hard to find. It's just slightly hard to find, right? Meaning that you probably have to go to like your top of the line liquor stores um, in order to really find it, right? Your liquor stores that have a solid bourbon collection, you will find it there, right? And for the most part, it will be at MSRP, which is about $130, right? So a buck 30. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into this, guys and gals. Let's go ahead and do this. So color-wise, this is a very deep, dark brown, right? Now, it's aged 13 years, so it's been sitting in that barrel for a long time. Very nice. Beautiful, elegant brown. All right. Let's get into the nose. Whew. You know what's interesting about this one? Wow. It's very, very oak forward. Sitting in the barrel for 13 years, that makes sense. No brown sugar, no maple syrup, more oak, caramel, vanilla. Um, hmm. Yeah, caramel, vanilla, oak, some like leather, some, some notes of like pepper as well. What's funny about it, and also some, uh, some berries, the nose, it's very weird in a way. It almost kind of reminds me of a blend of um, the Woodford Reserves Masters Collection, the oat finish. A little bit of that, just a dabble of that, but primarily Elijah Craig 18 years, right? Because you know that Elijah Craig 18 years is very oak for it. It reminds me a lot of Elijah Craig 18 years with a drop of Woodford Reserve, the oat collection, right? Mixed in, right? Very oat. Um, but oaky as well with some cherries in there as well. The nose is actually really, really nice. It's very elegant. It's just like sitting back, hanging out with friends like you all, sipping some good bourbon. Or in this case, hopefully good bourbon. <laughs> all right. Well, as we say, cheers, salute. Uh, I say this every week, but I mean this wholeheartedly. Thank you, honestly, for watching the videos. Thank you for all the commentary. I love going back and forth. Uh, again, 2021, we're going to be able to connect even more. So stay tuned. But as we all say, cheers, salute. Mm. All right. Very nice. Very, very nice. Mm. I'm going to get a little bit more before I give you a full final verdict. All right. Okay. All right. So, a couple things. <laughs> Everything from the nose transfers to the palate. And what I mean by that is it's primarily very oaky, right? If you love an oaky bourbon, this is very oaky. But it also has some notes of cherries blended in there, some caramel, some vanilla, some pepper, um... Uh, also on the, on, the, on the back end, which is very unique as well, is that it has that oat, right? From that, like almost like that, I hate to say it, like the Woodford Reserve, that Masters Collection, that oat is in there as well. So it's very creamy as a whole. The finish, it kind of goes here and then it kind of goes away, right? Very smooth. So I have to give you a straight up final judgment. The judgment is in. This is a no buy. I know you're probably wondering, Bourbon Judge, this is a nice bottle, it's $130. Why is it a no buy? I gotta be straight up and very honest with you guys. Nose was there. Palette was there. Finish, it missed the mark. It missed it. It was just like, it was there and then just dropped off, right? If I'm spending 100, uh, granted, I got this from Santa, wink, wink. But uh, if I'm spending $130 on a bottle of bourbon, I want it to be phenomenal from the start to the finish. Don't just get me, you know, three-fourths of the way and then just leave me like we didn't even know each other, right? Get me all the way across the finish line. This one just missed the finish line with the finish. It was here and then just dropped off, unfortunately. So I get it, right? I would say this is probably like a $100 bottle of bourbon, maybe 90 to 100 but no more than that. But I get it, right? Jim Rutledge and friends are trying to offset some of the expenses of being, becoming a brand new distillery, a brand new source bourbon company until they can create their own. Eventually they will. 
but unfortunately, this is just way too pricey for it. Folks, thank you as always. I appreciate you as always. Cheers. Look out very soon for the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace out.